hi guys thanks for joining me again if you're new to my channel welcome 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 my name is Anne, and on my channel i review foreign international content um, and i like to say once in a while we get one of those shows that just goes international and this is one of those it's called the harder they fall and the reason why i can say it's international is because i've heard the person who wrote the show I think is producing, even the music is James Samuel, and he's from um, England, London. Um, and then there's Idris Abba in this one as well. But I have just to say, James Samuel, wow, 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 wow. I have a feeling we're gonna be hearing about him. He's here to stay. This was fantastic. I heard he wrote it. I mean, he produced it. I think he was even helping in directing. And then the music selection in this movie, oh my God, it's just off the chain, especially for a Western. Wow. I have to say the way they wrap that in, it's like you got rap music, you got African, you got some reggae. I mean, it was great. It was almost like, wait, am I watching a Western or what just happened? But the music just kind of, you know, flew in there. And I feel like even the young people will be like, oh, a Western. I think I may want to watch this one just because I think the music just took it to another level. Anyway, for anybody who doesn't know what The Harder You Fall is, it's a really a Western, really. But most of the cast, like I think 90% of the cast is black. And really, it's your quintessential story, uh, like we all know, of Western, where it's about the good and the bad. Usually the storyline when it comes to a Western is pretty simple. The bad guy does the bad thing and then the good guy is like, I'm gonna get you, I want revenge because we always have to make things right in the world, right? And in the process, I love that it stayed in the cocoon of like, it's two black, like families, gangs, if you wanna call them. Uh, we knew that, we know that, you know, in this era, racism and all that stuff was happening, but I just love that they just kept it within these two gangs and they were both black. Um, and it was just, Fan just fantastic everybody in this show did a fantastic job it has the most incredible cast i mean we're talking regina king regina king oh mg girl wow usually she does like good things but i was just like girl was like don't play me right i mean she was so good in this i was kind of scared idris abba obviously like i said um, we had Jonathan Majors. Oh my God, he's so good. He's from Lovecraft Country. If you watch that, oh, so, so good. We also had D-Roy Lindahl. Oh, so good. We also had Dion, uh, Dion Cole was on there. The cast was just fantastic. And by the way, I also heard Jay-Z, I think, was also involved in the production. The music part, I could totally tell. Maybe Jay-Z was involved in that too as well. But a really fantastic show, Netflix. I love that it felt like, you know, it felt like the Western shows are kind of getting extinct or going away. And then usually Westerns would be, I have to say, like 100% white. And just to kind of flip that over, make it a different race. And then the music and just throw in the culture, like fantastic. Like, let's go and have an Asian Western. Come on, let's go have an Hispanic Western. But really what I really loved about this show is that they took the movie, but they used real life historical figures. And that's what really touched me. It was almost like, yeah, we can have fun, but in the process, we're gonna teach you some history, black history, if you will. And I thought it was so good. And that's what I wanted to, mostly wanted to kind of touch on how everybody in this show, or most of the major characters in this show um, they all, their names, they come from a historical figure. And just to get to know them, I went and started looking them up and reading about them. And I was like, what? This is fantastic. Because you know, most people will not think that they were black cowboys, which they were there, right? And actually, I was reading the original cowboy was Hispanic, I believe. And then obviously they taught the black cowboys. Remember, the cowboys used to be the hell. And then obviously... Once, I don't know, it, somehow the white uh, people started riding their horses 
and all of a sudden a cowboy became something cool you all wanted to wear your hat you know your leather and your cowboy boots and ride that horse and it became this cool thing but i believe it came from people who would take care of the cows and i believe in those days you know like um black men were called boys so cowboy i think that's where that comes from but i have to say uh, in on top of the fact that it was an excellent western excellent movie i loved so much and thank you once again james samuels because what he did was he gave a credit to the real cowboys if you will you know the real historical figures where this you know westerns are made from you know when you used to see a john wayne and all that stuff it was real characters black cowboys hispanic cowboys out there and i love that um the actors in this show um have a name based on a historical figure that uh, idris alba is playing um the name is rufus buck and really the real rufus buck was apparently he was part of a gang and that would make sense because uh, idris character is playing the bad guy so apparently rufus buck was the same way he was part of a gang and let's just say they got in a lot of trouble and eventually uh, ends up being killed and then the character of jonathan majors um nat love apparently um since he was 15 after his dad died um he really had to take over to help take care of the family and became a really uh, good uh, kettle puncher taking care of uh, cows if you will and by 16 i think he went on his own and apparently was a very very well skilled cowboy there you go black cowboy and then the character of um, zazie she's playing stage coach mary if you've never heard of the story of her name was mary fields she was the first black postal office uh, female worker and apparently she was badass i heard that she was the fastest at hitching like um, a team of like six horses um, she never missed a day at work and if it snowed and the horses could not get through she would put the sack of mail on her back with snowshoes and walked it there she had the gun she was like don't even get, been getting my way she was consistent and people are like mary is gonna get the mail there and she was a woman like badass oh i love that story i i heard it many years ago and i thought wow what a badass she was really fantastic i am so happy that they gave a tribute to her because wow yeah can you imagine her being on those horses and with the gun and like bring it right like oh makes me so happy talk about black girl magic Woo! all the way all the way just makes you so proud and then the character of deroy lindo was bass reeves and he used to be a u.s deputy marshal or oh, who was really good at his work i heard he i think arrested like three thousand people a very hard worker like on his own did so much more than his counterparts black or white and i just love that obviously uh deroy is playing the marshal and it made sense that bass reeves would be what they would name him and just give him that homage because i know when they would write about the marshal he was probably who they were thinking about right just fantastic and then the character of rj is james beckworth and apparently he was a blacksmith, skilled fighter, far trader. I mean, just fantastic. And then we have Lakeith Stanfield. He was Cherokee Bill. Let's just say Cherokee Bill um, was also a gang. He did a lot of, I guess, bad things, but that would make sense during the Westerns. There's always good guys and bad and guys. And then the character of Eddie Gadengi, who, by the way, I have to be so proud. He is a Kenyan American actor. Oh my God. I grew up in Africa, in Kenya, so I'm just proud. Come on, Eddie. He was so good, by the way. He played the character of Bill Pickett. And Bill Pickett uh, was a cowboy performer in, during his time. Just fantastic. And then we have Dion Cole, who played um, 
Willie Esco. Once again, kudos to James Samuel for really uh, giving this historical figures um, credit where it was due. You know when they made Westerns, really, these people is who they are referring to, the good, the bad, the ugly, if you will. Um, and uh, I just love that he took the time to give them credit by you know, naming his characters after these real historical figures. But a really excellent, fun movie. It's one of those when you watch, you want to go and watch again because I bet you catch something else that you're like, oh, I missed that. But it's so well done. It's like serious. It's fun. There's music. There's some comedy in there. There's love. I mean, it was very well done. The cast is just fantastic. I am here for, uh, for, for sure, um, a sequel, a prequel, whatever it is. I feel like we have a franchise going on here. It was very, very well done. And I really loved it. Even for people who don't like questions, this is a storyline that you're like, what's going to happen next? And you even forget that I'm actually watching a Western. You know, because sometimes Western used to be like those shows that all people watch. But this, this is not your grandpa's Western. This is on another level. It is fun. The storyline grips you. I love the filmography, the sets. And then the acting, everybody was on point. And like I said, the music, I need that soundtrack. I'm looking for it because I need to add that to my playlist. The music was off the chain. Do yourself a favor and watch The Hatter, They Fall. You will not be disappointed. It's action. Really, really, really good. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you love the video, give me a like, subscribe. It does help to support my channel. And I'll see you again when I'm reviewing another excellent um, international foreign uh, content. Deuces.